Here we go, episode 149 of The Hardline. Michael Merlo, John Michael Masiri here with you as we will break down everything that went down in week nine of the NFL. JM, another crazy week. A lot of, you know, I think a couple of disappointing outings from one big team in particular, but a couple of others as well. JM, how are you doing on this very fine Monday night? I'm doing good, man. Uh, yeah, there were some some good games out there, some bad games. Uh, the 1 o'clock slate when it came to a matchup standpoint was brutal uh, heading in. It actually supplied us with some good football games, though. So I was, especially the Patriots-Titans, which I'm sure we're going to spend not more than 20 seconds talking about uh, in this JM. episode. But great I actually game. don't remember who won that game because I was in the middle of traveling at the end. Mm. Who won? The Titans ended up winning that game. In okay. Yes. yes. There we go. Yes. That, that's how prepared I yes. am. That's not one of the games on the list today. Great ending. Did though. not look. Yeah. I, great to, to I regulation. Did see, great I did see the play from May. I did see the play from Drake May. You'd like to see that. You're a big Drake May guy. <sighs> yeah, I am. I wish it was for my team. Yeah. But. Well, yeah, we could. Hmm. Yeah. Not uh, big Drake May guy, but kind of rooting against him now. Yeah, I, I mean, me too, because he's a Patriot, but there you go. it's more of a saltiness that you're rooting against him now, so you don't regret. It's not like he was on the board, though. Like, you didn't no. have a shot at drafting him. No, but I really wanted him. I yeah. really wanted yeah. him. It's tough. I guess it's not, you're, you know what, it's not right to root yes. against him. I'm not going to root against him. Root against McCarthy. <sighs> okay, that's fine. I can okay. do that. And Knicks and Penix as yes. well. Yes. Okay, perfect. <laughs> anyway, lots to get to before we start. Uh, just a little housekeeping before we get to the best team maybe in the NFL. That's a little tease, so stay on the New for York one Jets. second. Definitely, definitely not. Uh, <laughs> make sure you're liking and subscribing on YouTube where you're watching us possibly right now. Or if you're listening, uh, rate us on Apple, uh, Apple Podcasts or Spotify. We appreciate the support and the ratings and the comments and the polls that they put on Spotify. Very nice job, so... Thank you for the support, and check out our social medias as well. All right, JM, the Detroit Lions, that's the team that possibly is the best team in the NFL. Um, they go into Green Bay. It's raining. The weather stinks. It's a little cold. They haven't played outdoors all season long, and they go there, and they make a statement by winning that game the way they did. Yeah, that's not good, right? The Lions, they can't play outside. They can't play in bad conditions, right? That's what we hear. Uh, all season long, but oh, guess what, everybody? You're wrong because they could play wherever, whenever. Uh, you said it yourself. This team looks like the best team in football. That's including Kansas City. Yep. Uh, I mean, they just look absolutely lights out. The thing about this Lions team that is just so damn scary is they choose how they want to beat you. Mm. Like every single game from the kickoff to the final whistle, they are like, okay. How exactly are we going to beat you today? We're going to play this football game on our terms. We're going to do every single little detail better than you're going to do. And we're just going to go out there and dictate the game. And and that's what they did against the Packers in rough conditions. And Mike, I mean, I don't know how you could be sitting here on a, a, a Monday night in, in the first week of November and not be thinking this team is the best team in the NFC, if not the NFL. Yeah, you know, the past couple of weeks, I think you mentioned it, they haven't had to do much, right? It's like the passing game hasn't been dominant the past two weeks, and yet they've blown out their opponents. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it was really a 24-3 game, right, in that Green Bay game, and then Green Bay made it a little bit closer, but really handled them. And then obviously the blowout against Tennessee at home, they didn't do much on offense through the passing game. Now, they can run the ball. Is this a crazy statement to make? Their offensive line might be the greatest weapon they have. Oh, 100%. And not only the greatest weapon they have, but maybe the greatest weapon in the entire NFL. 100%. I mean, you look at the, the, how they played against Green Bay and how they've played all season. One play, it's it's Sewell dominating somebody. That, that Gibbs touchdown, the 18-yard run. Sewell throwing amazing blocks out there. That offensive line just dominating the Packers, getting the push, and Gibbs basically walks into the end zone. The next play, Taylor Decker's making a play. The next day, Frank Ragnow's making a play. Like, they just have guys on this offensive line that, that bully you. And we know about the offensive play caller in Johnson. He puts Goff in the perfect uh, positions as well. Listen, I'm not, I don't want to say it's easy, but it makes sense that Jared Goff is in these situations, it looks easy for yeah. him because they can run the football at will, because they can pass protect better than anybody in the league. Yeah. They Everything is at their fingertips. And defensively, in the secondary, they're making plays. They lose a guy that was on track to be the defensive player of the year. Great. They're making plays. A touchdown yesterday on defense. 
you know, it's everybody is stepping up where they have to. And if this defense is going to continue to play this well, along with the offense, we know, again, they're beating you in different ways. Mm Mm-hmm. I can't see how there's a team in this league. Yes, the Chiefs. Yes, the Ravens. Yes, the Bills. Can they? Who could beat them? I don't know. I would take them up against anybody right now, except maybe Kansas City, just because Kansas City has been Kansas City for so long. Um, But they just do whatever the hell they want. On defense, I mean, you lose Brian Branch on a targeting call, which Mm -hmm. I thought was actually the right call. It It was very egregious. Saw it live, and I was like, wow. Uh, that's really bad. Um, they lose Brian Branch. You already don't have Aiden Hutchinson. So there's your top two defensive players out. You're on the road against a division rival who is no slouch of a team, a team that's hot coming in on a four-game win streak. And you have those guys, uh, you know, you have Brian Branch get taken out of the game, and you just continue to dominate defensively. So that speaks a lot to this defensive unit, to this this coaching staff. Um, the ability to still play to their game plan and and effectively play their game plan on the defensive side of the ball without Brian Branch and Aiden Hutchinson in an environment like that. If they haven't shown you already after that win against Minnesota or just the way they've been playing all year that they're the real deal, I think the Green Bay win is like, hey, uh, Super Bowl or bust at this point with this team. Yeah, Green Bay was the team in the NFC right now, and then this could change in a couple of weeks. But Green Bay was the team, I thought, that could compete with them, you know, that could come close to them. Yeah. And they obviously shot those rumors down. That is not true. And I'm trying to think. I don't think Washington would be able to compete with this team. No. I don't think Philadelphia would be able to compete with this team. Nope. There's nobody in the South. I mean, the Falcons. I don't think the Falcons would be able to compete with this team. And then in the West... I think the Rams are too banged up at the moment to compete with this team. Are the 49ers healthy enough to compete with them? Yeah, who knows? I don't think so. I mean, the 49ers, I feel like this is like their next game is 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 opening day for them because you're coming off a bye week. And now you're getting Christian McCaffrey back. Let's see how this team plays, you know, with a, with a fresh slate in their minds. So we'll see with them. But, I mean, no, I would not take anybody in the NFC up against this team to, to, to give them a run for their money. I mean, they look like they're going to be on their way to a number one seed in the NFC. Not even beat them. Not even just beat them. Give them give them a game. I don't... Who could give them a game in the NFC? Out of everybody in the NFC, uh, to give them a game, I mean, I, I don't... I still don't trust Philadelphia. Uh, they they it, it seemed like after the win against Cincinnati last week, going into the first half here against Jacksonville, that they were like, okay, maybe they're starting to hit their stride here. Then they almost blow the game against Jacksonville. So I can't go with them. I would, you know, just... I would have to go with Green Bay still. I think... You know, there's a couple factors that were in that game that we're not talking about. It was some bad weather. Yes, I understand both teams have to play in bad weather, but I think that adds a little bit of of more of an outlier effect sometimes, you know, one team over the Mm -hmm. other. Uh, Obviously, Jordan Love's health hasn't been great. He did look a bit hobbled in the game. Uh, So I, I would still think that the Packers are their biggest threat, but I don't think that they're a threat that Detroit needs to be like, oh, if we want to get to the Super Bowl, we're going to have to overcome the Packers. Like, no, they have, they are the hunt, they are the hunters, or the hunted. I'm sorry, they're going to be the hunted. Like, they are the number one team in the NFC. And let's talk about Green Bay for a second because you know you have again. Let's let's look at it from a Green Bay standpoint coming into this one. Mm-hmm. You have your division rival. They're coming to your place again. We talk about the weather. This is a dome team, right in Detroit, and you kind of feel. Like, if you're going to ever get them, this is for the one seed currently for the division. If you're ever going to get this team, Mm -hmm. do you have a better shot at getting them than you did on Sunday? Yeah. It kind of lined up perfectly for them, Mm -hmm. and yet they're down 24-3 at one point in this game. Like, they are just so hit or miss. That's the point I'm trying to get at. They are. They played very sloppy football, a lot of drops out of their receivers. We talked about love the health you know he threw threw another pick another pick six that needs to be addressed because Jordan Love at this point you know he he's a great quarterback but he's looking a little too turnover prone and he's done it the entire season um so if they could clean that up and, and and regroup and you know, we'll see what that game in Detroit looks like we remember that game last year on Thanksgiving the Packers that was sort of their arrival um winning that game against Detroit on Thanksgiving, we'll see if they could, you know, 
come out when they go back to Detroit and whatever week it is, I'm not sure. But as of right now, Mike, the Packers, they got some things to figure out. And Detroit, I mean, after this game, it looks like they might just coast their way into to the division title. Right. You know, again, we saw what they did last season. Just not only Jordan Love, but the entire Packer team. They, they were a completely different squad when he got going. Is he capable of going on that streak again? Because if he is, we're going to see a run like they had last year where, you know, you could argue they should have been the NFC Championship game, very close to the NFC Championship game, right, against the one seed last season. So they are just – they're young. They're inexperienced. LaFleur – I don't even want to put all this on the floor. I think yesterday and, and a couple of these losses with Love turning the ball over, they're on Jordan Love. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you look at the Packers so far, you know, they're 6-3. and three. They haven't won a game within their division yet. So wow. they're 0-2 in the division. They got that loss to the Vikings. They got that loss to the Lions. And both of those losses are home. They haven't played a road divisional game yet. Up until after the bye week next week, they they come off the bye playing the Bears on the road. If there's anything we know about the Packers, their get-right game is playing the Bears on the road or playing the Bears in general. Um, you know, it, the joke is Aaron Rodgers has handed the, 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 the Bears' embarrassment keys to Jordan Love now. He's passed that down. Yeah. So that could be a, an opportunity for them to get right. But after that, you know, they play San Francisco. That'll be a really intriguing game. We know about the difficulties against San Francisco in the past mm -hmm. with the Packers. They've gotten eliminated numbers of times in the playoffs. And then they got a stretch of primetime games where they go Thursday night against Miami. Who knows what Miami's going to look like at that point? I mean, Miami looked really good against Buffalo yesterday. Um, really good to stretch. Compared to how they've been playing recently, really good for their standards. Yeah. Uh, and then you go at the Lions on Thursday night football. You play back-to-back -back Thursday night games, which is crazy. I don't. Have you ever heard of that? Back-to-back -back Thursday night games, yeah. which is Thanksgiving? Thursday night, yeah. It's Thanksgiving, home against the Dolphins. Then the next week, December 5th, Thursday night against the Lions. Yeah, so I've seen that with Thanksgiving, but that's it. Right. That's the and only... And then you got Seattle on the road Who on they Sunday night football. They're playing the Dolphins at 820. That's the late game on Thanksgiving. Uh. That was a cool game in the beginning. I'm, I, I still, yeah, I still got my eye on that game now. Uh, obviously, we're gonna watch it. They really are a completely different team with Tua. It's crazy. Like they just can't move the ball without him. And when they get him, they're they played a, a they played a Christmas game with Rodgers. Rodgers last yeah. season, which Black was, Friday. No, the Rodgers Packers in oh, Miami Christmas yes. Day two years ago. Yes, when the Rams blew out the mm -hmm. uh it was the early game yeah the middle game was the rams broncos yeah. that got hackett fired mm -hmm. that was 22 that fired. i or forgot tw about that 22 well, wasn't that like 54 to 10 or yeah something? they got killed yeah the packer game was close packers game was good that was a good game Th that game was good was that on christmas it was christmas day Dolphins Packers. Dolphins Packers. Because I was in it was Miami. So weird. Yes, it was in Miami. I'm like, I remember that game. This but I doesn't don't remember feel it right. Yeah. On Christmas. Christmas Day. Hmm. The more you know. Yeah, I guess so. Mike, let's talk about that AFC. The, you know, we had this discussion on the gambling show, which, by the way, we should have opened up the gambling show with this. I yeah. mean, three and zero. I told you I was going three and zero. I went three and zero. Okay. And I sent Mike a meme last night of. Me, you know, the, the meme, yeah. the, the objects in your, their, your rear view mirror may appear closer than they actually are. And it was my face <laughs> in the mirror. I'm coming. I had six stars yesterday. Pause. I told you I was getting six. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I got six <laughs> stars. Very happy about that. But we argued on the gambling show. And it's, it's an interesting discussion because it was before the Jets had played the Texans. And the discussion was, I don't think the Texans are part of the elite class in the AFC. I just think they're too young, they're too inexperienced, and they weren't as banged up as they are now, but they are certainly banged up at the moment. And I think you definitely can't put them in that class no. of the top three in the AFC. And how about this for a discussion? I don't even think they're four. Okay. Um, they did show some very, very alarming um faults in that Thursday night game. That being said, no Nico Collins, no Stefan Diggs. And now for Stephon me, Diggs is out for the year. Th for for the for the Texans I'll, standpoint, I, I would consider that one a wash for them. Okay. However, the offensive line 
is a problem. <laughs> yeah. The offensive line is 100% a problem. Mm-hmm. Going into the game against the Jets, it was I problem. believe Stroud was, what, the fourth highest sacked quarterback in the NFL? And if you watch C.J. Stroud play football, he's not one of those dangerous, hold on to the ball for too long style guys. Yes, he's creative. Yes, he gets out of the pocket. He can make plays with his legs. But he's a very smart quarterback, and he gets rid of the ball when he needs to. He's got a lot of plays where he'll just throw it away, um, and or he'll just run out of bounds, You know, take a little bit of a loss, whatever it is. They're just not protecting the guy. No. I mean, especially the interior part of the line. We know about Tunsil, right? We know about how great of a left tackle he is, although he didn't have his best game did against not, the Jets. Did not look good against the Jets. The interior line, though, is brutal. So I would and not. And they lost ban- their starting guard yeah. in the game. I would not bank on them to be a serious contender. Not to toot my own horn, but. If the Jags or somebody in the AFC South wanted to like step it's, up here, I would have been proven right it's this all funny. season. You were you were essentially right about. I was that. right and I was wrong. You're right and wrong about that. Yeah. So when they get Nico back, though, they will be interesting. They will be interesting, but okay. You said they're not top four, so obviously Bills, Ravens, and Chiefs Those are, are top over three. them. Those are top three, not in any order. I'm gonna I'm gonna go into the mind of Michael Merlo for a second. I'm going to say you like the Chargers better than the Texans. I don't. Is it the Bengals? It is not. Pittsburgh. It's Pittsburgh. Wow. It's Pittsburgh. What, has hell complete, frozen over? Complete 180 wow. with the Pittsburgh Steelers Big Steelers there. guy, because, Mike Carlo. Because of oh, this they got reason. Russ. That's what I, because they have a professional playing quarterback yeah. now. And forgot when you have – forgot about the Russ fandom. When you have – no, it's really not about the Russ fandom. It's, no, you're not really – I mean, he – Mike Tomlin made the right decision because he said in himself, which one of these quarterbacks gives me the best chance to win a Super Bowl? If Russell Wilson can play to the level or close to the level that he's played at in his career, that's a Super Bowl caliber quarterback. You have a great defense. We know about the defense, right? Mm-hmm. And I tried to say it was overrated coming into the year. I was wrong. They're great. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. Top five defense. The special teams. I love the special teams coordinator. How great is that? Yeah. That guy seems like the coolest dude in the world. Yeah. I want to run through a wall for him. <laughs> The special teams is good. They have a good kicker. Okay. We know about that. The offense. I mean, they're actually running the football. Like, mm-hmm. Najee does not look bad this mm-hmm. year. The offensive line hasn't been bad this year. Pickens at times has looked like that star caliber receiver. Now, I would like before the deadline tomorrow. Yeah. If they went and grabbed, it doesn't have to be a Cooper Cup, but can they get a number two or three receiver in there? Right. That would be nice. But. Darius Lee? Yeah, call. He's open. Yeah. He's available. Yeah. Concussion protocol, though, might be oh, tough to trade him. Right. But um, I, I don't know. I think the Steelers, with a professional and quarterback, not turning the football over, letting the defense win them games, he's not going to play the way he played against the Jets and the Giants. That's obvious. He, he, he had nice layups to start mm-hmm. his Pittsburgh tenure. But I think they could just continue to roll with yep. Russ and, and figure things out. Now, now may I say yeah. that – we're talking about who are the best teams in the AFC and, you know, now's a good time to maybe tier them because you could make a list one through seven, but it doesn't mean everybody's oh, yeah. the same gap from the next team. Mm-hmm. If I'm looking at the AFC right now, after that number six wild card spot, like after I think LA holds the sixth spot and then Indies in seventh, Who's the first wild card? Why am I forgetting? The first wild card in the AFC would be Baltimore right now because the Steelers currently. Oh have my God! Yeah, holy crap! Okay, so after Los Angeles, that Denver Colts Jets Bengals tier, right? Yep. I think that that's a bit of a drop off. Although I do like I do like Cincinnati. Yeah. So I would pick Cincinnati over uh, the Den over Denver, Denver over Indianapolis over those teams, even though they're not even in the playoffs yet. But then once you get up towards the top, okay. I think I view the Texans and the Steelers in that same tier. Then I, I would, view I would throw the Chargers in there. Okay, number one defense in the league. All right, so we'll I, call that. I'll call that tier four. That's tier four. I'm gonna call, or sorry, no, I'm gonna call that tier three. Three, tier two. I'm gonna call the Buffalo Bills. Okay, that's gonna be my own tier. And then that's tier fine. one is gonna be Baltimore and Kansas City. That's fine. I view – I'm surprised that you're nodding your head right now because I thought you were going to get upset when I put the Ravens at a different tier I'm gonna, than Buffalo. I'm going to tell you why I sort of agree with you, but keep going. 
Well, that was basically it. And, and okay. I know we talk about Lamar and Josh Allen every single week. Yeah. But, like, we need to seriously start discussing how good Lamar is playing right now. Lamar is playing unbelievable. And last season, after they choked in the postseason, I said, I will never trust this team again. I will never trust Lamar <laughs> Jackson again. I'm done. Yeah. I'm done picking. I picked them to win the Super Bowl. I had money on them to win the Super Bowl. I was done. I was out. I was never going to pick them to do anything again. And they've got me back in. Mm -hmm. I like the Deontay Johnson trade. Zay Flowers looks like a really good player. It just seems as though they have enough weapons. And I actually trust that with the running game, they'll be, because it's so dominant right now with Henry and, of course, yeah. Jackson, they'll be able to now throw the football in the postseason. Well, well, the thing that just makes them so dangerous is, number one, Lamar is playing the best football of his career right now, and I, like, firmly believe that. I know he's got two MVPs. I know he won his first one unanimously, and he was, you know, he ran for, like, 1,200 yards. He's done it in two different sort of ways. This time around, I just think, it, as a passer, it's the best he's ever looked, and we the, the running ability has never gone away. Um, it's, his stats are incredible. With with the Can you read them real quick? He's got 2,300 yards. 20 touchdowns, two picks, a passer rating that leads the league at 120.7, mm -hmm. completing 68.2% of his passes. 120.7. That is like Aaron Rodgers in his back-to-back -back MVP yards, seasons. Yards per level. attempt shit. Yards per attempt are number one in the league, yeah. 9.3. Yeah. I was reading a stat that it was going over like the EPA per play out of quarterbacks in the first nine weeks of the season since they started tracking that stat in like 2011. Whatever the hell pass EPA the, means, the, he's number the, one. The, the, na <laughs> the names that were above him when it came to that stat through the first nine weeks were like 2013 Peyton Manning, uh, 2016 Tom Brady who played for four games, Aaron Rodgers in 2011 and 2021, and, like, that was it. Oh, in 2018, Patrick Mahomes. And you know what? That was it. You know what's incredible about the, the Jackson-Allen debates that we've had this season and even going past, you know, in the past couple of seasons, it's very funny because I would put Lamar one right now in terms of they, they've played this season. Mm -hmm. But I think Allen is absolutely number two. Allen's yeah. having a fantastic year as well. Limiting the turnover. He had his first interception yesterday or two yeah. weeks ago, whenever it two was. Two weeks ago. He is 17 touchdowns, two picks. His pass rating, he's fifth on the list. Sixth on the list, excuse me. Like, he's also playing incredible football. We know what he does on the ground as well for that team. So, I think it's one, Lamar Jackson. I think two, for me, would be Josh yeah. Allen. Yeah, and we'll see after tonight. Um, you know, it, it, it's currently before game time in Kansas City, but... Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson, and Josh Allen, and Justin Herbert are playing phenomenal football right now, and Patrick Mahomes is stinking it up, and they're 7-0. So mm -hmm. if he wants to be like, hey, guys, listen, I'm not being talked about as the best quarterback in the NFL right now. Why don't I remind you guys who the hell I am? He now's your tonight. time to do it against Tampa Bay. But as of right now, I mean, don't be afraid to go out there and tell your friends and tell whoever, hey, listen, I don't think Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in football. That's totally okay at this point because even though I don't – that's the problem with Kansas City. We just think Patrick Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes. Like, no, the Kansas City Chiefs are a team who are a very good football team. And, yes, they have a very good quarterback. But let's stop being like, oh, Pat Mahomes is just on his own mountain and he could do no wrong and he could go rob an old lady and we'll say, oh, you know, MVP is the best guy I've ever met. No, like let's let's tone it down a little bit and give credit where credit is due with the way that these other quarterbacks are playing. And you mentioned Herbert. Herbert's played well the past couple of yep. weeks, not against the greatest really opponents, well. but figuring things out there. They're they're now five and three after mm -hmm. that uh, that bad loss at off the bye, or excuse me, a week after the bye to the Cardinals. But they're starting to figure it out but now, they and they have the best defense in the league statistically. Yep. They have a nice run game. Dobbins has, has played very well for them mm -hmm. this season. And th they'll figure it out with the receivers because Herbert's so good. Yep. Ten touchdowns, one pick. So, um, Herbert, my guy. That's my guy. He's he was for uh, forgotten about. Yeah. Forgotten this, about. This past week in the NFL, I think up to this point, because we, we talked about it a couple weeks ago and we talked about it this season with how bad the football has been. And we remember the whole crisis in the beginning of the year with yep. the two high safeties and Mel Kuyper wanting it to be banned. It's Football's terrible right now. Blah, blah, yep. blah. I think we saw the best quarterback play that we've seen all year across the league this past week in week nine. Okay. I mean, I'm just thinking about – I don't know if everybody watched Joe Burrow play this weekend. But he was great. Wow. I mean, it looked like Joe Burrow, you know, in, in an LSU Tigers jersey out there. Um, 
you know, we talked about the game Lamar had. Josh Allen had a great game. Had a, One of the best plays I saw all weekend was a Josh Allen scramble for a touchdown that got called yeah, back for that holding. Was brutal. It was a brutal hold. That holding call was, was not a hold. Brutal. Was not a hold. Brutal yeah, holding call. Absolutely terrible. The guard who was had the hands inside. Yeah. Somehow the ref saw that. Yeah. That was a rig job there. Terrible. That was really bad. But one of the reasons why I did not shake my head at you. When you said, I have the Ravens on another tier, I'll, I'll tell you the reason why. And, and the same crap happens again with McDermott. The coach holds them back. Yep. The coach holds them back. The difference between the, the Chiefs and the Ravens is that the Ravens have a professional coaching the team, one of the five best coaches in the league. Obviously, we know Andy Reid's the best. The, the Bills have a clown running that football mm. team. He stinks. And that's think. why they're a slight, a game. slight tier. Yeah. Slight. And that's another thing about Buffalo that I'm still not trusted, trusting them on. I don't think that they've been fully tested yet. They were tested, actually, when they went to Baltimore on Sunday Night Football and got their asses handed to them. That felt like a, a, a great spot for them to lose. I agree. They were yeah. tested, and then they really yeah. failed. And then, you know, you you have the loss to Houston, which we don't, we're not even sure what Houston is yet. Those are their only two losses, to Houston and to uh, Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Bad game with a really bad coaching decision out of Sean McDermott in the loss to Houston. But besides that, they're 7-2. and two. They're beating the teams that they're supposed to beat. And they seem to be, like, catching teams at the right time also. They're, they're most... I would call it their most impressive win this year, I guess, would be when they went to Seattle and beat the crap out of them. Yeah. But, I mean, Seattle is, like, the, the worst good team I've ever seen in my life. They're they, not a very good team. They just can't figure that out. No, listen, they're going to they're gonna be tested, right? They're going to go to the Colts this weekend. That should be an interesting game with Flacco. I'm not saying that's a big test, but it mm-hmm. should be an interesting game. Then Kansas City, then a bye. Dude. Then how about these Dude. three games? Dude. <laughs> that Detroit game is going to be fascinating yep. uh, the week 15 on the 15th. So, And that's after playing – the Niners and the Rams back to back weeks. So that's gonna be that's gonna be incredible. They get the yeah. Chiefs and Niners at home. Those are very good games. Rams, great game on the road, and obviously probably one of the games of the year. If if the Lions and Chiefs or Ravens don't play each mm-hmm. other, the, the Lions and the Bills are is gonna be great. Yep. Well, I know the Lions have the Texans this week. That's gonna be fascinating to see mm-hmm. what the spread is. I think the the Lions are gonna be Huge home? favorites. I think it's actually in. Oh, it is. Let's in Houston. Let's guess. I haven't seen it. It's in Houston. It's in Houston. Uh, I, opening odds. I'm going to say Detroit is minus four and a half. I'm going to say six and a half. Wow. Let's see. I kind of like yours better now that I'm thinking about. Let's it. Let's see. We that's still week nine because we're technically still in week nine. It's Sunday. Did they update it yet? Wow. It's only three. Wow. Wow. That's actually very surprising. Do they? Not that Nico makes this much of a difference, but do they expect Collins to come back and play in Mm -hmm. that game? I believe he is. Is he coming? I don't know. He should be back. I thought it was after week 10. I heard. No, he's back. Next week, he's eligible to come back. Game opened at plus one. Yes. Just shows you the way things have been going for these teams so far. (sighs) God, I. I be listen. I I've bet against the Lions a lot. I bet against them this week as well. That's sharp. That's going to be very sharp. To I take might Houston. have to take. I might have to take Detroit and just sit yeah. on the public side yeah. with everybody. That's a fascinating. That's going to be like a ninety to ten difference. Uh, might in be. Bets. I don't know. The, the public loves. The public loves the. Lions, rightfully yeah. so. All they do is cover. Yeah. I bet that's going to be a lopsided. How about Giants Panthers this week? That's terrible. Like, that's, oh my God, <laughs> Germ- Germany. I mean, what the four and a half points? Giants are favorite. Yeah, that, that's the international game you want after Patriots Jaguars. Great. Let me say this about the before we uh, move on here from the AFC. The big three. I have it in. I have it on. I have it on our sheet. The big three in the AFC. Mm. Miami goes there. You mentioned that you know the the level of play they face. Miami goes there and plays them tough for whatever reason. Yeah. The last couple of years with Tua there and McDaniel, they played well in Buffalo. They give them a game, and they did that again. Miami, mm-hmm. You mentioned Miami looked the best they have in a very long time. Give them credit, but yeah, Buffalo's able to stage off. 61-yard field goal. I mean, yeah. Holy crap. That was great. Time really wanted that game to go to overtime. It was a fun game. I wanted it to keep going, but whatever. 
All right, let's move on to the NFC East Jam because this is <sighs> some this is some division here. Am I right? Yeah. For, we'll start with the Cowboys because they're the biggest story. Okay, the Cowboys are the biggest story. Streak is over. What's or the sorry, streak? the streak continues. I mean, what um, do you mean? Uh, different winners in the NFC East for sure. I think we could safely say that now after Dallas loses Dak Prescott on the IR and they're three and six. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I would He's say officially on the IR. He's officially on the IR. They are so. They are so bad. Terrible. So bad. And Have just, we seen a col- worse collection of weapons for a big time team competing for a play? Coming into the year, team supposed to compete for the division. Have we seen one? Probably not. And we knew that in the offseason. We were like, okay, coming in, you got CD Lamb and you got like Jake Ferguson. And, you know, that's basically it. Like, that's all you thought. But we were like, you know, but Dallas, you know, Dak's a great quarterback. They've had a great line for years. And, you know, they'll figure it out. Maybe some guys will emerge here. We know about Brandon Cooks, the vet, and, you know, Tolbert. And somebody, maybe somebody's going to step up. No, nobody stepped up. And actually, guys are stepping down. Like, yeah. CeeDee Lamb is not playing up to CeeDee Lamb standards. Ferguson's been okay. He's got two guys on him at all times. Yeah, I, it, it, they're like the easiest team to game plan against on the defensive side of the ball if you're facing them. I mean, Rico Dowdle's been like, okay. Ezekiel Elliott is, a, should a play joke. fullback at this point at this point not even he should be offensive he should be a guard wow i mean Is that a fat joke no 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 of course not it's a slow joke okay um mike there's just not a good football team like there's no other way of slicing it like you you could talk about the way dax played you could talk about the coaching whatever you look at this roster though they're just not a good team no they're not let me play monday morning quarterback and you tell me if i'm crazy or not if i'm really just reading too much into things okay, okay. so they announced Dak's extension at the start of the season, okay? Yes. We all assumed that Dak was coming into this year and he was going to be a free agent, correct? That was the assumption the last two weeks of camp. Yep. Right? You, you follow me? Yep. So, we all thought he was going to have the ability to test the market. Mm-hmm. I thought giving him an extension before the year, it didn't really make much sense to me. Not that he needed to earn a new contract, but you don't know where you're going to be. You might be in a situation where the roster is so poor, maybe you don't win the division. Right. Maybe you do have a top 10 pick. Maybe Dak, God forbid, gets hurt. Exactly. Now you're 5-12, and 12, you have the 7th overall pick, and instead of being free of $60 million a year at your quarterback position, you have a chance to draft a quarterback or just reset. Mm-hmm. Remarkable. I, I I really just can't understand why they did it when they did it. And and that's really just the question I have for all the moves well, they made. You've this completely handcuffed yourself now. Like you said, I mean, you had the opportunity to treat this year maybe as a, you know, a, a test year where, okay, if things go right, sure, maybe we could be back in contention to win this division and, and talk about hopes to win the Super Bowl. And then we could worry about our quarterback and his contract situation in the offseason. Right. Or, like, what is happening now, and like you were just talking about, you could say, oh, we suck. You know, Dak's not playing great. Maybe it's time to to make serious changes around here and, and, and fire the coach and let the quarterback go and kind of just reset here. But no, like you said, you locked up CD, you locked up Dak, and I mean, boy, the, the, that's $100 million right there that just seemed to be they're going to be wasted away. And I would have signed CD either way, right? CD yeah. probably would have been brought back no matter what was going to happen. Dak, though, again, like you, like you mentioned, like we mentioned, you're locked. And I think you have to consider trading Parsons at this point yeah. because you need to start stockpiling some draft picks. Get, I mean, you just need more talented players. Yep. So if I can get three or four decently talented players for my one talented player, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. So, Mike, you you want to look here at the uh, the contract of Dak Prescott? Oh, God. Not good. So, you know, you've got a forty three million dollar cap hit this year. Next year, it'll be an eighty nine million dollar cap Jesus. hit. Uh, twenty twenty six, it'll be a sixty eight million dollar cap hit. Twenty twenty seven, it will be a sixty two million dollar cap hit, and then a potential out after the year two thousand twenty eight, where you still take on thirty four million dollars. In dead cap. So, this is the way it goes sometimes. Russell Wilson, I'll bring up as an example, was a bit of an odd career path because 
you thought, you know, okay, early 30s, this guy still got plenty left in the tank. Dak Prescott's only 31 years old. Yeah. But at this point, could you now put it in the back of your, of your mind and be like, maybe when the situation isn't perfect for this guy, that he's going to start to tail off? I think, and I f- almost feel bad for him, because I don't think he's too reliant on the perfect situation. I think over the past couple of seasons, we've seen, you know, lack of receivers, but good offensive line and solid running game, you know, but not really the greatest backs, talented backs, right? We've seen the the talent regress, but I don't think he can survive this level of talent. We know that Dak is a quarterback that is really, really, really good. Like, uh, me and you both, even you being the Giant fan, I'm, I'm high on have Dak. came on this show and said that Dak is a top 10, if not even top 8, like, really good quarterback. But we also talk constantly, it seems like it comes up every other show, about there are quarterbacks that can survive in any situation, then you have quarterbacks where it depends, and then you have quarterbacks where they're going to suck in any situation. And... You're, there's still more in between those tiers, but at that point, I don't want to start splitting hairs and getting really detailed yeah. about it. Dak Prescott is not in that tier of quarterbacks, though, that, okay, he's Superman. He could just do whatever he needs to do in any situation. He will be a really good quarterback. They paid him $40 million a year, yep. and they were still able to add some things around the edges, right? They were still able to pay certain positions, and they drafted well, and they were able to win games. They've won divisions, right? Yep. Now you're paying them $60 million a year. You're paying other stars that you've drafted a ton of money, and you haven't really drafted too well the past couple of seasons now. It's starting to catch up to them. And you're not making the moves of, hey, let's sign, you know, a star running back for only $8 million a year, right? right? And Derrick Henry, when that is a move that can absolutely be made. They're well, not making the right decisions up front, and it starts with the owner and his son. You look at from – it definitely starts with the owner and his son, but you look at from year to year the weapons that this guy has had. I mean, you know, he had CeeDee Lamb and Amari Cooper together at one point. He had a prime Ezekiel Elliott. You know, Amari Cooper leaves, Zeke's still there, but guess what? Tony Pollard's emerging now. You know, you get the threat of two mm-hmm. backs, and you still have a really good offensive line. Now Tony Pollard leaves this offseason. The offensive line gets worse you bring Zeke Elliott back, you don't really add, and now it's like, uh oh, we're in really deep trouble. I think sometimes we don't realize the how big of a hit it is to have a lack of weapons around your really good weapons. Look at the Jets, for example, right? Everybody expected Garrett Wilson to come out with Aaron Rodgers and have this okay, finally Rodgers is healthy. Garrett Wilson's got a quarterback. He's gonna be a stud. He's gonna have, you know, he might get fifteen hundred yards, whatever. And Garrett Wilson and Aaron Rodgers can't do anything. They, I, I mean, they're they're barely getting by. Then the Jets bring in Devontae Adams, and the thought is, oh, Rodgers and Adams are back together here. Adams is going to go off. We'll see what happens to Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson has gotten better. He's putting up better numbers with Devontae Adams there. I mean, sure, maybe it's looked at that Devontae Adams is the number one outside guy, but, mm-hmm. I mean, Wilson so far is still getting more of the, the total output right. than – than Devontae Adams is getting. So the point is, a lot of the times when you bring in another weapon, not only does that weapon as an addition help your offense, but it opens up things for everybody else and it elevates everybody else. And the Cowboys don't have it. They don't. You feel bad for Lamb almost. I mean, he got paid, but there's nothing. Again, there's nothing that he could do yeah. when they're just constantly double teaming him. I Dude. see this with... With Chase, too, I'm watching some of those Bengal games. You know, even yesterday, like, Chase didn't have a great game. They have two guys on him at all times, especially when Higgins can't find his ass on the field. And what Uh, do people say all the time? Oh, wow, the Bengals are so good with T. Higgins on the field. They got to keep him. Well, the reason why they're so good with T. Higgins is because they also have Jamar Chase, and they both are great receivers. And they they open it up for for both guys, 100%. Everything is so forced, dude, with this Cowboys offense. It's it's. So I feel bad for I feel bad for Dak. Yeah, I do it because there's nothing he can do right now. Yep. There's just nothing he can do. Yep. And how many times have we? I mean, am I am I going crazy here? Or have we asked them to draft a receiver the past couple mm-hmm. seasons? Mm-hmm. You know, what are we doing? We've been looking for that number two receiver ever since Amari Cooper left, and they can't figure. And, it I mean, out. Cooks, you know, eh. 
And Ferguson's a fine tight end. Yeah. He's fine. Mm-hmm. But not what they're asking him to do. No. They're asking no. him to not be basically. Number two option. They're asking him to be George Kittle. Yeah. you, can, you can't Travis Kelsey. Yeah. It's not going to happen. too much. It's not going to happen. Mike, I hate to say this. Because you know, I don't, I don't hate the Commanders. I, I don't. So you right. know, if if any team was going to win the division that my favorite team plays in, I would say I would, I'd want the Commanders to win. Yes. Right? I don't think they're going to win the division. Oh, I think Philly's going to win the division. Wow. And Philly, Philly, legitimately is going to go to the playoffs. They might even win a playoff game, and you're going to be able to say you watch the worst head coach ever win a postseason game. <laughs> arguably one of the worst head coaches ever win a football game, playoff game, okay? That's how bad this guy is. He is such a clown. He's an idiot. Mm-hmm. And yet their talent, they're so, so talented, that team. It's going to take them over the edge. Yeah, it is going to take them over the edge. Um, I don't know, Mike. That that The commanders, like, <sighs> you really want to root for them. And they, they really are like the Texans of last year. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, it's just the Great. same storylines. Yeah. Holy crap, where did this team come from? Look at this rookie quarterback balling out. Exciting offensive play. I'm excited to watch them take on Philadelphia because I think that is going to be a true test of both teams mm-hmm. and really see what happens. Uh, is it next week? No, next week is Dallas and Philadelphia. Next week is Dallas and Philadelphia. So I'm look at tell you look at the now. schedule here. The week after that is Thursday night football on the road against Philly for the Washington Commanders. Wow. That is That's going a to be test. a great, great test for them. Listen, Washington, we could sit here all day till we're blue in the face about talk about how great Jay and Daniels is. The job that Dan Quinn has done and the job that Cliff Kingsbury has done with this team is something that needs to be applauded. It's something that we've said this a couple of times that's going to get Cliff Kingsbury a job mm-hmm. as a head coach in this league yep. next season. Maybe if the commanders convince him to stay like the Lions, you know, somehow did with Ben Johnson, yep. that'd be cool. Um, but this is a serious, seriously great job by the by the Washington Commander staff and Dan Quinn to come over here in their first year into an organization, mind you, that has a history of dysfunction. Uh, we know about the Dan Snyder stories. We know about the stories with changing the name and everything that went down. They're making it work, man. They're winning football games and they're scoring efficiently and it's it's calmed down a little bit from the Chicago game, but basically historically they're scoring the football. Yeah, it has. Daniels can, and I, and I want to say this. I think when you are going up against a team like Philadelphia, and you know, and then we're going to compare them to the better teams in the NFC, like the Packers and obviously the Lions, who are mm-hmm. the top dog. I just don't think they have. An, this might sound crazy. I don't think they have enough receivers now. I think Daniels is playing at such a level at this very moment that he might be able to overcome that. Yeah. He makes so many plays with his feet to extend plays and extend drives. He plays like a like a 10-year veteran. He sees the field so well. And, I mean, listen, they might not be big-name receivers, but these guys are open. Yeah. They, I mean, especially on Sunday against the Giants. Yeah. They, were, they were all open, and McLaurin had two touchdown pa- uh, catches, but he didn't really do much outside of that. Mm-hmm. So I just worry about the lack of production that they're getting from their receivers outside of McLaurin, but they got the two backs working. They throw to both backs. I don't know. I just think yeah. Philly, I, I trust Philly more, and that might just be a, oh, they've been here. I don't know if I trust Philly more, though. If you look at both these teams and who's played more consistently throughout the season, I think Washington well, has. That, 100%. I mean, Philly looked like they were going to miss the playoffs at one point. So how are you going to trust Philly if you don't even know because, what version you're getting out of them? Because I think the the weapons that Philadelphia has, when, when A.J. Brown is on the field, and they, they came out today that the knee injury is not too serious, when A.J.'s on the field, they're a completely different team. He might be their most valuable player. And it seems as though Kellen Moore is now implementing his offense and Hertz has really started to get going, and he's really played well the past, I think it's four games now. His numbers look very good. Mm-hmm. So if Hertz is starting to get back into that MVP form that we saw in 2022, that we saw in the first 11 games of 2023, then I don't think there's really anything Washington can do. Like Phil, That offense is just going to roll. Did as you, long as Nick Sirianni has no input, which I'm sure he doesn't at this point. Did you really just somehow go the entire time talking about the Philadelphia Eagles and their offense and not mention Saquon Barkley? 
I forgot he was on there. Yeah. And, I forgot he was on there. Yeah, the guy that's making backwards <laughs> hurdles and like and looks like Superman. Obviously, the addition of one of the best running backs in football. I one hate, I hate to best. say it, but like, if you're Saquon, how can you not be like, oh my God, what? This was the greatest decision of my career. And I mean, it, it is really nice as a football fan to be watching, okay, this is what happens when you pair a dynamically you know, generationally talented running back with a great offensive line and system like that. Yeah. It's, it's fun. very it fun. fun to it's watch. fun for you. It's very, it's, 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 I, I it's, won't lie. I, as long as it's fun for you. Sorry to stop on your parade. Sorry to, to, to ruin the mood. But. You know, the, you know what, honestly, the, the giants the past few years, man, like it's, you're I'm numb. S- I'm numb. You're numb. I don't even. That's care. what happens. You know what? But honestly, God, I don't even care. But this I'm is this is some this is something you got to remind yourself of because I find myself doing it with the Jets. When you reach that point of where you're numb and you're just like, you know what, I'm done. There's like a comfort in there, and you gotta you gotta resist that. You can't get comfortable what do you mean? being miserable. That's a thing. Like with Jets, like I experience it. Like sometimes I'm like. Oh my god! Like I'm so done. This team sucks. Like whatever, just tank for the draft pick. And like I'm there. in the back of my mind, there's a part of my brain that's like, oh, I'm used to this. Okay, this is this is comfortable. Like this is home base. They have no. To. You cannot think like that. The Giants have to lose on Sunday. I mean, oh yeah. Like they, I have never seen a more must lose game in my life. Why would they want to like continue to put this guy out there? Who? Jones. You know, I I made a take yesterday. They should just bench him to bench him, and then I and like if you watch the game, you could tell he didn't play that great. But the numbers do tell you that he actually had a decent game, and, and I don't think you could actually bench him off of that. But he, he couldn't throw the ball for the first. No, for the first half, he yeah. didn't throw the ball. Jam like Richardson Nobody's gets benched you- after fifteen games, and, and this guy's made sixty starts at this point. Yeah. I just want to see him be benched for the principle of yeah. it, yeah. for just the. Here you go, Giant fans. We, at least you can have this. The guy doesn't yeah. have to play quarterback for you. Oh, anymore. here's the top article on the New York Giants page on The Athletic. Daniel Jones might be the next Derek Carr or Russell Wilson, parentheses, not in a good way. That's fine. I, I'm so done. Yeah. Put Tommy DeVito yeah. in. Although, you know what? DeVito took them out of the, the Drake May, yeah, exactly. Jaden Daniel. So, yeah. I don't even know. Put Drew Locke in. I'm sure yeah. Locke will you know, he'll make the flashy plays. He'll keep you in the game, but then he'll throw the back-breaking interception late, yeah. and then he'll lose you the yeah. games. He's perfect. As we get closer to the end of the season, obviously now we'll finally start talking about the exit plan for Daniel Jones and – he, I, I think I think two weeks. I think in two weeks he'll be benched. Yeah, the Russell Wilson thing because they mm-hmm. it's the same injury guarantee, so they um, have to bench him at some point. Yeah. They cannot, yeah. cannot. Let oh, him and the Derek hurt. Carr thing. That's what that article's about. Oh, Derek Carr had that too. Yeah. Oh, then yeah, that's what it yeah. is. Yeah. Okay. So they got to bench him at some point. Yep. Uh, where were we? Yeah, Philadelphia again. The head coach. He's gonna lose him a playoff game. I, I don't know mm-hmm. if, what round it's gonna be, but he will lose them a playoff game. Yeah. Speaking of coaches getting fired, JM. Mike, who said it? We, I believe you said in the off season that Allen Dennis the Allen first one. was going to get fired, and I said Derek Carr was going to be benched in the middle of the season. Okay, I was which right. I honestly am still not falling off of that. I think that's coming up. There's soon. a chance that might be coming up soon. But I hit Allen. You did fired. hit Allen. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I almost feel bad for the guy because yeah. you know they did get off to they got off to that hot start. And then Carr goes down. But even before Carr went down and they cooled off and came back down to earth, they didn't look like a terrible football team. No. They did look like a team that would probably win like six to eight games. But but they are so banged up. It's almost yeah. like – and, and I, I, I'm i happy I'm right. You know, like, oh, yeah, you got one right. But did he even deserve it? Like, they are so yeah. injured. They were almost 3-0. and They almost beat Philadelphia. I mean, yeah. they should have won that game. But yeah, they've been banged up a lot. Chris Alave, it's it's actually Concerning. scary. And the were you on Twitter yesterday and seeing all this stuff? Michael Thomas is going up to like citizens of New Orleans, asking them what they think about Derek Carr, and they're just like slamming him, and he's posting I, it to his Twitter. I didn't see, this. and he's tweeting all this stuff about how Derek Carr is like a terrible quarterback, and like he like he like sabotaged him and Chris Alave's relationship, and he's the real problem. I don't know, but it was basically a lot of. Terrible things Michael Thomas was saying about Derek Carr, and then Chris Olave's brother got on Twitter. I saw that saying that There's no Derek Carr was Nola. exactly, and, and and Derek Carr is throwing hospital passes to Chris Olave all day, can which I, he kind of is. Can I say this? They are 
like and you if you have another franchise that you could throw in here that's fine okay. they got to be the most irrelevant uninteresting boring team in the league yeah. Who else is there? Because, like, the Panthers are comically bad. Right. With a number the, one overall pick. Yeah. Like, they have some things where you're like, there's some intrigue, right? Some intrigue to talk about them. Mm-hmm. Like, what do you do if you have the number one overall pick? Things like that. Like, they are boring and bad in a, in a terrible situation. They are. And they the aging players. Like, Who the hell would want that job? What's the hope with Derek Carr? Yeah. You know, Kamara's still, I mean, hats off to him. He's still a great player at the age he's they at. They extended him. They gave him another yeah, year. Oof, that's great. great Why the see. hell he'd want that? Yeah, well, I, I, I would have said trade me. Exactly. At two and seven, we're extending 30-year-old running back. I would have told him to trade. 100%. Two, it was two weeks ago, but still. Yeah, your, car, your career's going to get wasted away now. I mean, you know, he had in the beginning of his career those Drew Brees teams, but yeah. at this point... Go somewhere else. Look at Derrick Henry. He almost rotted in Tennessee for the for the end of his career, and now he's out here in contention for the Offensive Player of the Year, and he's you know looking like he's going to help this team make a Super Bowl run. They, it's terrible. Bad football team. Who bro. I gotta say this. What does Peterson have on Shad Khan, whatever the guy's name I is? I don't know. What does he have on that guy know. that he's still there? I don't know. I mean Lawrence. I guess you just wait till the end of the year to get that done done with. At this point, because like you, you know, know what's what it, the point of firing him in the middle of the year? If they had lost the game twenty eight three, maybe he goes. Mm-hmm. But they did fight back. They had a couple of big plays, but like Lawrence isn't getting any better. No, and I mean that's got to be the number one thing. And you paid the guy. You I gotta paid say, him. you're not wrong with your Saints take. But another team who's like this is the most disinteresting team in the league, the Raiders. Oh, where God. the hell is that team going? I mean, you nailed it on that on the head. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's going to be one and done. I don't even want to talk. They are so bad and they are so terrible. But like New Orleans is just a bad team, and it's unfortunate the way it's gone. I wouldn't say they're like terribly run, especially considering the success they've had in the past eight years. That's fine. Las Vegas is terribly run. They, they are like what a dysfunctional franchise they are. There is zero hope. The, there is the, legitimately the, you, zero hope. You there. had two different opportunities to draft a quarterback. You could have drafted Anthony Richardson back in in twenty twenty two, and you could have drafted a uh you know a Bo Nix or whoever the hell or traded no, they up. Missed out, they missed out. They you could have you could have traded up a couple okay. spots to go get somebody. Um, in this past year's draft, but no, you decided to sign Jimmy Garoppolo two years ago and then say. You know what? I know we were wrong about signing like veteran mid quarterbacks, but I got a good feeling about this Gardner Minshew guy. And you go sign Gardner Minshew, and now you're benching him for Desmond Ritter, who was sitting on his couch two weeks ago. He is going to get fired. He's going to be one and done. They signed him to a contract, a three year contract. He's the lowest paid head coach in the league. Mm -hmm. They knew, as dumb as Davis is, he knew. He knew how bad this guy was, and he yep. will be fired within the year. Not shocking. Good point on the Raiders. They are the Raiders, though, and they are in Vegas, and they have the new stadium. So there is a little bit There's like a little more... bit glimpse of hope. that they It's could... also could get so toxic there. Yeah. It's not going to get toxic in, in New Orleans. Mm-hmm. That's why it's just like so – you almost like feel bad for them. Yeah. Not the Raiders. What a joke. Mike, we said it before the year. We looked like idiots. But now we're right again. The best thing that is going to happen for Caleb Williams this season is them not making the playoffs, him struggling a little bit, mm-hmm. and getting these dumbasses fired. Yep. Ibraflus and Waldron will be fired by the end of the year. It seems as though he's losing the locker room. You got DJ Moore running off the field after a scramble drill. He just ran off the field and sat on the bench while the play's still going on, and he was in the play. Mm-hmm. And... Then asked today in Chicago Sports Radio, is Ibraflus losing the locker room? And he's like, he gave like a very wishy-washy, yeah, I don't know if I would say that just yet. Like, oh, really yeah, just interesting yet. answer. Great. You know, I don't want to say, yeah. So Yeah, you uh, you stole my hate club. Uh, that was, my, my hate club was basically just going to be Matt Ibraflus. Okay, there uh, Like, the, 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 the Chicago Bears, um... I mean, how many times did we say before they picked last year when Justin Fields was still a Chicago Bear? We were like, fire Matt Eberflus. Mm-hmm. No matter if Justin Fields is staying 
or if you're going to get Caleb Williams, you got to get rid of this guy, Eberflus. Because all everybody wants to talk about is, oh, you know, Matt Eberflus, you a, 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 see that defense? See how that defense played in the mm-hmm. second half of the year last year? Okay, great. Well, when the Chicago Bears team has their offense playing like crap, you got to hold on to that defense. And that defense is not good enough to be able to hold on to. And they proved that when they got schlacked by Arizona on Sunday. So... Caleb needs a real coach to step in here. They're already risking the possibility of him developing into the true quarterback that he should be be, by putting him through this first year and doing the same thing they did with Fields when he had Matt Nagy. And now you got to have a new head coach step in and a new offensive coordinator and a new system and all that stuff. Mike, if they were smart, they would take notes from the team they just played and the guy that's the rookie quarterback that's playing better than him because one guy has ties to both of those teams Mm -hmm. and his name is Cliff Kingsbury. And if they were smart, they would go out and they would bring Cliff Kingsbury into this building because no matter if you think that the guy is the best head coach to produce a winning football team, there's one thing out there that makes him so special that maybe only Ben Johnson can compete with and he knows how to develop quarterbacks. Yeah, I think there's two guys and you just name the two guys. There's two guys that will get that job. Ben Johnson, if he's allowed to interview for it mm-hmm. and Cliff Kingsbury. Those are the two. Yeah. That's it. That's my short list. I mean, Harbaugh was interested in the job. They said, no, we'll keep Eberflus. Idiots. Yep. <laughs> um, ben Johnson was interested in the job. Never opened up. Mm-hmm. You know, he was very picky about what job he was going to accept. Looks like an idiot for not accepting yeah. the, the commander job. And I I remember we, I, we had discussions off and on camera about how I would be petrified if that was the case. Ben Johnson, Jaden Daniels combined with all that money they had to spend. Yeah. I was petrified. You remember? Yeah. He didn't go there. But that's more important. What I just said of literally, if you had two guys that you interviewed next to each other and you had to choose and you said, okay, well, this guy, we know that he gives us the best chance to develop Caleb Williams, but this guy, he might give us a little bit better of a chance to put a winning product on the football field. I'd pick the guy that could develop Caleb Williams. I think that is single-handedly. It does. It does. Yeah. But I'm saying like, a Dan Campbell culture setting type versus a guy who we know can develop a quarterback. Okay. I'm going to take the guy who can develop a quarterback. 100%. God, in this in this case, you, you absolutely have yeah. to. So, I can't believe it's going like this. Mm-hmm. They got off to, they, what were they, 4-1, and 3-1? One, and one. Yep. I'm like, they're going to make the playoffs. Yep. No, they're going to miss the playoffs. And mm-hmm. it's going to end up being a good thing for the Bears and that franchise when they do have to let him go. Yep. Mike, time for the hate club. I mean, you just got your hate club, so... Yeah, I'll think of something else on the fly. So I'll go. How about the analytics? Okay, I understand using analytics, and I understand the numbers tell you to go for it here, go for it there. I get that. But I'm watching a couple of these teams, the New York Giants, throw the analytics out the window. When you are a bad football team, just take your points. When things aren't working, Nick Sirianni, just take your freaking points. Enough of being ultra-aggressive. There are times, there are spots, but it's the same thing in baseball. There are times where you go strictly by the numbers, and there's times where you go by feel. Dayball, mm-hmm. your team stinks. Kick the effing extra point, please. Same thing with Sirianni. If things aren't working, just just kick the ball. Get some points. They almost lose the game because of this. Enough's enough. I un- Listen, analytics are important. I'm not saying you throw them out, but you have to start going by feel a little bit. When things aren't going right, when the tide starts to turn a little bit, don't be ultra aggressive. Just kick it. Yeah, and, and I mean, the Giants did it yesterday, like you said. When two, they, two weeks in a row. Yeah, well, yeah, they go for two. and It may or may not have affected cool, the spread it's, yesterday. It's, yeah, yeah, there you go. But I'm just saying, spread. I mean, seriously. No, but like, y- y- you understand it. If you get the two-point conversion, it makes a lot of sense. You're not like, oh, wow, that takes the pressure off. Now we go get a touchdown, and we just win the game. Just kick the extra point. But no, instead, you don't get it, and now it feels like the pressure to get that touchdown yeah. doubles. Because you got to get the touchdown, and then you got to get the two point conversion. And it makes sense for good offensive teams exactly. to do that. That's a great point. Not bad is, football team. That is single handedly the biggest gap that we see with analytics, and we've said it a bunch of times when we were 
not even a football only show. We applied it to all sports. It was a great to be used in baseball as well. When we talked about Blake Snell years ago and when he got pulled by Kevin Cash with 80 pitches and I was like, "Well, that's the analytical play." You you need to take into account wh- who you are, what situation you're in. Yes, understand in this specific situation, the numbers show that you should do this. Well, guess what? If you're a team on on 4th and 1, like the Seattle Seahawks did yesterday. Mm-hmm. And the, okay, you got to go for it on fourth and one. Well, does that fourth and one crazy. also tell you that you should run a, a power O to the left side with nine defensive linemen on the how line? How do they not kick the field goal? There? I, I don't know. How do they not? Or, kick or the how do you three? not at least call timeout? Check out of the look you had. I can't. You know what? New hate club. I just thought of it on the fly. <laughs> I cannot stand when these teams go out there on fourth and short situations, and it's like, hey guys. We're going to run the ball. And, like, it's not going to be, like, a creative way to run the ball. Like, no, we are just going to run it straight up the middle. And, like, we don't care. We're not even going to put a fullback out there. We don't need lead blocks. (laughs) We trust our 19th ranked in the NFL offensive line to get a good push on this defensive line in a key situation. It's I'm I'm basically blending yours with mine. If, If you're the Detroit Lions, go right ahead. Please, line up in whatever formation you want. You need one yard. You're the better football team. You're the stronger offensive line. You can get that one yard. If you're a football team that does not know how to run the football and hasn't been efficient at running the football and doesn't have a running back you trust to fall forward, maybe don't line up in the most obvious formation possible and run the most obvious play, you know, run up the middle that you've ever seen in your life. Can I get a little bit of creativity? I'm dying. I'm going to shout out my dad real quick because... He had a. This is one of my earliest ball knowing uh, moments I've ever seen in my life. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take you back to the Denver Broncos playing the Dallas Cowboys in the year 2013 okay. in AT&T Stadium in Jerry World. I don't know if you remember this game. This is the Peyton Manning led Broncos team. That Broncos team that was incredible. Manning the had the great the, year, the right? The one where he had the fake out, fake handoff, bootleg, and yeah. he walks into the end zone. I do not understand why teams don't try that out more often. Uh-huh. If you're the Seattle Seahawks in that situation, I know we're just playing Monday morning quarterback, and we're you know hindsight's twenty twenty and all that stuff. If Geno Smith, like if you just fake a handoff there, who the hell is going to come after Geno Smith? There? Yeah. And just have a tight end cross a little bit. Exactly. Just it, for it could be even be an RPO. Yeah. Now you got the option to just dump it off to the tight end. It yeah. could be your lead blocker slash. Exactly. You could dump Look that at off. Us coaching. There's no creativity whatsoever. Stop at thinking you're the Detroit Lions and you have you know prime Marshawn Lynch behind you and you could just run the ball up the field. It's a good point, Mike. It's a good point. Uh, before we get out of here, any games you're looking ahead to? I know we already talked about that Lion Texan game, but. Week 10, there's some, there's some good games on this schedule. I got there, one in mind. There's a, I'll, I'll leave you the big one coming up very, very soon if you want to take that one. Uh, I mean, there are some super big games. I mean, we're going to talk about it on the Gambling Show when we talk about the primetime games. Yeah. I mean, we, we touched on Lions, Texans. We even went over the spread there. I mean, Eagles, Cowboys is, is way less intriguing now yeah. with Cooper Rush being there. Pretty sure only a half a point difference in the spread. Yeah. Unless they assume Dak wasn't going to play. When they put the spread out yesterday, but yeah, yeah. It only moved ahead. Yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah, Bengals Ravens. That is, yeah, that's you know, that's that is, game. it's huge. I was like, I heard, I listened, um, I was listening to a podcast and they run the Thursday night ad, and you know, usually, I don't know if these podcasts know, but like, you know, you could just, or not, or the advertisers know, yeah. Yeah, I could just hit that skip 30 seconds button. Yeah. I don't like, it's You're not, hearing it a little bit still. But they were playing, and I was like, I actually didn't know who was playing Thursday night. So I listened to the ad, and he was like, the, the, the Cincinnati Bengals play the Baltimore Ravens. Like, whoa. It's a big one. Holy crap. We actually got a Thursday night game that's 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 going to be worth the watch. Let's Mike, go. It's a big one, and the Bengals absolutely need it. The Ravens, I mean, they could use it for the division, but it's, it's a huge yeah. game uh, in Baltimore. I actually take back my statement. I, I'm ragging on Thursday night a little too much. They, the Jets-Texans game ended up being a good game. And yeah, that was a pretty boring game. Well, it was though. a boring game. Yeah, but in terms of like the the storyline coming catch. in and it ended up being the underdog one yeah. or actually betting odds they weren't the underdog. Um and then you go back to Rams Vikings. There have been two two pretty good primetime games in a row for Thursday night. Okay. Give them What's the, your game, Mike? My the Monday night game looks great. Yeah. Dolphins Dolphins Rams. I yeah. want to talk about the Rams. We couldn't fit them in here. Uh the Rams, you know, I I've, I've talked about them the last couple of weeks. I think they're going to win the division. Uh, but that's a big game at home for them against a Miami team that's desperate. That's I don't know. Gotta be like vintage 
shootout right there for those two offenses. That could be a good game. That could that be a could really be good a game. Real, that could be like a 41-38 type of game. That yeah, could so be really fun. I'm excited to watch that next mm-hmm. Monday night. Guys, if you're still here, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening to episode 149. The Big 150 next week. We'll have a gambling show later in the week as well where I am coming up on JM there. I'm right there. Right He's there. Really He's really not. He He's hears really the footsteps. Not. I don't. I, I heard from a source the other day. He was talking. He's, he's worried. So um, just. I don't know what source that is, but just okay. Look out for that. Mm-hmm. But uh, we'll talk to you guys later in the week with the gambling show.